let's get to some of the hot topics in the world of professional wrestling. Now, several people have sent us a specific tweet that I know you didn't see because you no longer see Dave Meltzer's tweets. You are correct. I I un- unfortunately had to block Uncle Dave because every time I would read something he said, it would make me dumber. Well, there was a tweet the other day that I saw, and several people sent it to us. I'm going to give credit to one person. I'll tell you why in a second. It was sent to us using the hashtag corny drive through from Ryan Caligari, and I'm going to give him credit because after he... Is, does he, is he a doctor, and does he have a cabinet? Well, no, but after he tweeted it to us, he was seemingly attacked for snitch tagging because they didn't realize he was trying to ask us our opinions about it for the show. They thought he was just saying, Jim Cornette, see this, and attack Dave <laughs> Meltzer, which wasn't actually what he was trying to do. He wanted us to talk about it here on the show, which is what we're about to do. What we're about to do. Dave Meltzer tweeted the other day, except for All Japan, no company at one time in the 80s had anything close to Young Bucks, FTR, Omega and Page, Lucha Brothers, SCU, Santana and Ortiz, Best Friends, Jericho and Sammy, oh good lord, even Private Party, all at the same time. So the topic is tag team divisions, and is this AEW tag team division, with the exception of All Japan, is this the greatest tag team division of all time? Well, now, wait a minute. <laughs> well, obviously, no, that's not the case. The greatest tag team, to, are you on fucking LS, LSD? I agree with Dave's tweet the way, the way that he wrote it. He said, no company has ever had anything like, and then he named all those teams all at the same time. No company has ever had anything like a couple of those teams ever in history at all, period, by choice. So, yeah, I agree. No company has ever had anything like all those teams. Whether that's a good or bad thing is open to debate. And, and, and no, if, if he, I know what he was trying to say. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find some fun in it. I'm trying to mock it with it. I, I haven't just cussed Dave Meltzer in public. Privately, I did via fucking private communication. I've told him exactly what I think about everything that's gone on over the last year or so and a lot of things he said but i didn't do it publicly but he's at this point it just gets ridiculous and he's he's burying himself to even people at this point that tried to defend some of his defenses of aew and or this style of wrestling in general but specifically AEW, all of his friends and his and this, I guess the kind of wrestling that suddenly at the age of sixty that he suddenly likes, he suddenly likes this fucking. They, they, he wouldn't have liked this wrestling twenty years ago because they wouldn't have allowed anything like this wrestling twenty years ago. So maybe he would have liked it then. I don't know. We'll never know because they didn't have anything like that for good reason. Because wrestling drew money back then. Um, but it's just he's. He's burying himself because that's a ludicrous statement. If you, if, not only if you went to the 80s WWF and NWA rosters, whether it be uh, Midnight Rock and Roll, Road Warriors, Tully and Arn, or fucking Bulldogs, Heart Foundation, Demolition, fuck it, or, or go to the, go to a 70s fucking After Magazine and look at the top 10 tag team ratings. And you're telling me that you've got a Stevens and Bockwinkle or a Stevens and Patterson or a fucking any great tag team of, of, I just don't know what to say. FTR, obviously, as we've said, is not only the best tag team in the business now, and that's still, uh, unfortunately, faint praise, but, but they go far and above that to stand out head and shoulders above most everybody else as the greatest tag team in the business. They would have fit in 80s NWA. They would I, they could have easily fit work-wise in 80s WWF, but they aren't fucking 300 pounds a piece, so who knows how that would go. They could have worked any territory. They could have worked with any talent. And then you, you got the Bucks, and for the kind of people who like that kind of thing, that's the kind of thing those people like. It's completely preposterous 
the the whole the look of them and the gall of them, but they do the flippy nonsense modern wrestling better than anybody else because they're natural gymnasts, and that's basically what they're they're gymnasts doing wrestling things, kind of. The gymnastics is more important to them, but they're the best in the business at whatever you would want to call that style that they do. Um, SCU, any two of the three of them, I've said I think it's the best working team in AEW in the ring before FTR got there, but are we seriously seeing a Midnight Express, a Rock and Roll Express, a Stevens and Patterson, a Tully and Arn, a Funk Brothers, a, a fucking, a, a, go on down the list. Are we seeing those at, from SCU? And I like those guys. No. Um, who else was on the fucking list that he was claiming was a, or trying to insinuate was a great tag team? Private Party. Bless those fine young men who work very hard and are greener than pepper trees. And Mark Quinn is an amazing athlete. And as I've mentioned, if you put him in an intensive training program where that's what he did, like NXT or OVW was for a year or two and put him in a ring with some veterans, you could make a star baby face out of that fucking guy. But as a tag team, for fuck's sake, I mean, if, if you want to talk about even non-major league WWE or AEW, are you telling me the private party is good as the Briscoe brothers, for fuck's sake? In, in, in Mark and Jay, I'm not talking about Jack and Jerry. Um, no, they're a green average independent tag team. It does a lot of fucking moves, and one guy's a freak athlete. But seriously, as that's... <laughs> I'm sorry, that's like saying a guy's a world-class cliff diver. It makes him a wonderful airline pilot. It just... Uh, no. Um, Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara, they've had what three tag team matches together. They're that noted world-class tag team. That's better than the fucking British Bulldogs and whoever the fuck else in history, Don and Al Green, the masked fucking interns, whoever, uh, let's say uh, the Lucha brothers. Yes. I guess they're the best tag team in the history of Lucha Libre. Unfortunately, as we've mentioned, it's very hard for them to have a fucking American match. I've seen them try an MLW, and it wasn't pretty. And that's in person. I've seen them try on AEW, and it wasn't pretty. Because they don't really try because nobody makes them try. FTR slowed them down a little bit, and they look fine, but they're not going to do it on their own. But still, for fuck's sake, are we even saying that now the Lucha Brothers are a better tag team than, than fucking... The Death Missionaries? I know there was three of them, but still. No, you proclaim them the best Lucha tag team of all time. I, don't, I haven't heard too many. Other well, no, I'm, I've, I was being kind of facetious or whatever. They've, they're, they're the best right now, I, I guess, from what their PR tells us. They're the best tag team in, in authentic Lucha Libre at this point, right? Um, What other team? Oh, best friends. Best Fucking friends. Seriously? <laughs> That's where it just gets, it's like a guy that's trying to tell you and convince you of a conspiracy theory with Dave. And the first couple of points that he brings up is kind of like, you know, he might have something that, well, I, you know, that actually did have, or I could see that. And then he goes all the way into where he needs a tinfoil hat. And you're like, brother, what the fuck? When you get to best friends, great tag team, fucking seriously. And who else was on that list? He named so many of them. Santana and, and Santana and Ortiz. And Ortiz. God damn it. I've met those guys. They were very nice guys, but fuck. The more we see, the more we realize that the Pampiro, Firo, Pampiro, Piro Firpo Jr., whichever one, Ortiz, I believe, wants to be one of the Three Stooges, the, the comedy stuff, Santana was more serious. He did that promo, but they're always in the goofy shit. And and they're an indie tag team. They've never had experience working at a major company, a major television level. I know they've been in TNA. I've had, you know, notice I've used the word major. It, they just do indie matches. I'm sorry. We're, we're talking about one great tag team and everybody that was mentioned a couple of good indie level tag teams and the best, you know, flippy team. If you want to see that type of thing, 
because that's and that's why they look like small children because grown adult men with physiques that you would be intimidated by can't do that shit nor should they so but that's he dave is just going so far with this that it's just gotten preposterous and i guess that's why they're just why he's mad at me why everybody's mad at me because i'm just not gonna goddamn go along okay well shit this this shit sandwich is the best fucking burger i've ever had or this well this impossible burger tastes just like meat no no it doesn't that's what they ought to call this new rest the impossible wrestling looks just like wrestling no no it fucking doesn't and just because i'm the only motherfucker in the world that is not looking for a job trying to make friends wanting one last run on tv or just don't give a shit just because i'm honest and tell you what you're fucking looking at i'm sorry but more and more people obviously as we continue to pick up disgruntled wrestling fans that are offended and repulsed by what they're fed as wrestling these days they're starting to see through this shit also yes ladies and gentlemen in a lot of these cases most of these veterans going along with this or these veteran journalists trying to make excuses for this either want a job want to be friends with people want one last run on television or just don't give a shit and are just jacking off and taking somebody's money I choose to be not in either of the four categories. And then, of course, there's the argument that you're out of touch if you don't accept that this is modern wrestling, that this is the natural evolution of wrestling. And to Oh, me- no, well, I, well I'm, I accept that this is modern wrestling, and I, and I accept that it stinks so loud it would gag a man eating from under cheese in a septic tank of a slaughterhouse. And I'm going to comment on that anytime I get a chance because they offend me. Can you imagine, you know, there's some great television shows out there. They're not filmed exactly like The Fugitive or classic shows from the 60s, but they've evolved and they're still great and they still have storytelling and good cinematography. And you could argue that some of the shows today are better than any shows ever before. But what if those shows didn't exist? What if every television show was a reality show? (laughs) Would you have to accept that, well, this is just where television is now? It's just as good as it used to be. It's just different. And you can't point out, well, no, I like story. I like shows that make sense. I like shows that are logical. I like shows with actors. Well, well, how about this? How about just consistency? There have been changes in the rules and updates to every professional sport since those sports have been formed basketball baseball football and they're highly debated rules changes or the three-point shot or whatever the fuck it may be they're debated amongst the fans and they're controversial sometimes instant replay fucking but it doesn't change the the logic and the concept of the game that they're playing in entertainment Simpsons been on the air for 30 years, right? And they have, they've uh, over time evolved and changed. And there's some things they do now that they would have never done and never been able to do 30 years ago on television and other things they did 30 years ago that they probably wouldn't be able to get away away with today. But Homer Simpson never in the course of the program went to Harvard and became a scholar and then started running a fucking major corporation where he was charitable instead of like the evil Mr. Burns, they didn't change the whole goddamn program or they didn't just come out and tell you 15 years into the run. You know what? All this shit's been bullshit. We were just kidding, but here's what we really think and just change everybody around or wink at each other, whatever you can draw any kind of correlation between sports, movies, television shows, entertainment, books, books, which most of the time have a beginning, a middle, and an end. That's kind of the way those things are written, whether they're fiction or non. The only thing that's just completely given up and thrown its hands up in the air and said, fuck it, we're just going to make fun of what we used to be that when we were popular, and now to an ever-decreasing uh, number of people, we're going to just do stupid shit that makes fun of the shit that we used to do when we were so much more popular. And so I'm going to take the piss out of it. 
Cause what the fuck? I don't care. And and I I've already offended everybody I can offend. I found that friends are highly overrated. As as my dear friend Bobby Heenan used to say, a friend in need is a pest. So I don't have to worry about it hurting anybody's feelings because I don't give a shit. And I know what they're doing better than they do because I've been doing this for 40 fucking years. And I've assessed and or helped promote and produce and develop some of the biggest stars of the last 30 years. So And and they hate that I don't like them because now they've even come up with the thing where, well, if Cornette doesn't like you, you must be doing something right. Yeah, to 500,000 fucking basement-dwelling cretins on Twitter, you're going to be a hero. But you're going to be a fucking short-lived hero, and when those cretins find another way to fucking fill their time in between masturbatory fantasies on the internet of something else, then they're going to leave you, and then you can't get a job in the wrestling business, and you're fucked. So I, I guess they just don't like that I just take the piss out of them because I don't give a shit and I'm honest and I'm knowledgeable. Modern wrestling, this is what we're seeing. Well, going back to this tweet, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could read it. And again, there is a difference between what Dave reports and Dave's opinion. And I look at it that way. Dave's opinion is that what he enjoys, the type of tag team matches he enjoys, this roster in AEW is as good as anything since all Japan. But not everyone has the same tastes as Dave. Not everyone has the same sensibilities as Dave. And let's talk about tag team divisions. You brought up Stevens and Bockwinkle before. Realistically, the AWA had a fairly small roster. So even though they were one of the great tag teams of all time, it wasn't like they were eight teams deep in in the AWA. So let's look at the 80s, because the 80s, you did have a lot of tag teams in different places. If I had to ask you, what is the greatest tag team division of all time? What would you pick? Oh, God. Um, Well, and you are correct in that, especially in the 60s, 70s, the territories didn't keep huge rosters. But you can look to the late 70s Carolinas, where you had... It, and I and somebody's going to go back and look at the dates and say, well, so-and-so left two weeks before this other team got there. But in that period of time, you had Ric Flair and Greg Valentine, Ole and Gene Anderson, uh, uh, Snuka and Orndorff, um, the goddamn, uh, um, oh, fuck, uh, Mr. Wrestling 1 and 2 worked some of the late 70s Carolina shows and the tag team tournaments. Uh, I mean, help me. Who am I leaving out here? As far as the Steamboat, did I say Steamboat and Youngblood? The Briscoe Brothers. That late 70s, early 80s, what, four or five-year period? How many other great tag teams? I mean, you know, uh, Superstar and uh, Paul Jones were a, a top team for a long time. But there's a t- just a territory, not even a national company, that was so fucking deep. Who did I leave out of that that group? You named a lot of names, so just uh, I'm not sure who you left off. Yeah, well, the point is, it's, and in the 80s, um, I mean, how can you look past Crockett Promotions? And and the, the teams in the WWF could have been better than what they were if there was more focus even then on tag team wrestling up there. But still, when you had the young, uh, the fucking uh, uh, Bulldogs and the Hart Foundation and demolition and the the rockers in there for a while and fucking it on and on that was deep or i just 90 I, you know when i first became a fan of the wwf those saturday night's main events the highlights were the tag team matches because they had like a rotating one team could wrestle the other team it would be the brain busters versus the rockers brain busters demolition rockers yeah. heart foundation heart foundation demolition those are just four teams and they were fantastic matches and I guess that's where, you know, it comes down to. If you're just saying AEW has a gigantic tag team roster, you're right. But to compare teams like Private Party or Best Friends or Santana and Ortiz, won't even, <laughs> won't even mention Jericho and Sammy. Wait, which one of those is the killer bees? Maybe all of them. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but th- that's the point. And the killer bees were, were over. I mean, we could argue they didn't have classic matches, but they were really over with that fan base. But 
it's just to me ridiculous to compare the AEW tag team division, which is FTR, the best tag team in wrestling, the Young Bucks, which aren't my taste, but I accept the fact that they are the best at what they do and that they have a giant fan base. Clearly, FTR and the Young Bucks. I are don't the know. Maybe giants aren't as big as they used to be then. It's not. It's not. But compared to the other tag teams in that company, the Young Bucks are right there at the top. So FTR and the Young Bucks at the top. Omega and Page are a team that were put together to build towards the eventual split. Oh, we yeah, we forgot about them. And, you know, there you have it. You have a wonderful singles wrestler waiting to get out of that fucking team. Poor Hangman. But to compare that division to Crockett Promotions and the compare it to WCW in 1990. Here, I see someone tweeted this as a reply. Steiners, Doom, Midnight, Rock and Roll, Nasty Boys, Southern Boys, Arn and Barry. Yeah, well, there you go. 1990 WCW doesn't get a lot of love, but uh, it's just, it's ridiculous. And Dave is 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 reaching now and alienating. He, he talks a lot about me driving people away. Yeah, when they're full of shit, generally I do, because the farther they get away from me, the less I smell of them. Uh, but he's running people off with just thinking that he's lost it, which unfortunately that's what I think too. I think he's lost it. If he likes this shit, that's great. But that means he's lost his fucking mind. Anyway, I, I, I just, I think we are throwing around the words greatest of all time way, way too easily these days. Well, again, it was no company at one time in the 80s. Had oh, and, and, and by the way, all Japan, that's because the, what did they do? They picked all of the greatest teams from all of the territories and brought them over for their tours. So, of course, at, at on one tour, they would have a better tag team roster than anybody else. And, and you saw all those great dream tag team matches of guys who worked different territories that would never – Cross paths in the United States, but that you saw it over there. So yeah, but that's that's not even really applicable because they didn't have them. They cherry picked them from their American territories for tours. I don't know. He, he's he's reaching, 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 tippy toeing. Well, that was one of the big controversies of this past week. <clears throat> well, you shows you what a boring week it was. <laughs> 